Hello and welcome to the Flom Gospel Weekly's Unit 4, Lesson Overview for Seeds. Thank you for joining us. Uh, my name is Erica de Urquidi. I am the editor of Seeds. We are pleased that you're joining us for this informal overview of the Unit 4 lessons. Uh, this is being recorded, so you can either watch the entire video or skip to the lesson you're preparing to teach. Uh, please share this recording with fellow teachers and catechists, as well as parents who are helping teach their children at home. I will present the overview for the English uh, lessons for Unit 4, and then I will talk very briefly about the bilingual lessons for seats. Let's begin with a prayer. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dear Jesus, Help us to find ways to stay close to you so we can grow in faith and love. Amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. This prayer was uh, from one of the family corners from this unit. Well, the theme for the last unit of our 2020-21 uh, teaching year is we remember Jesus' death and resurrection. Uh, this unit starts on March 14th, which is the fourth Sunday of Lent, and ends on May 9th, the sixth Sunday of Easter. Uh, on this unit, the children will learn that we can be children of the light. We grow as Jesus' followers. Uh, Jesus gives us his body and his blood, his reason. He brings us peace. He cares for all of us and creation. And that they're also going to learn about Jesus' uh, rule of love. Uh, we want to remind you that we have parent teaching pages online that uh, they are like a condensed version of our regular teaching guides for those parents who are teaching the lessons at home. For this webinar, you are going to need your teaching guide or your parent teaching pages. You are going to need um, of course, the lessons for the students, the What the Church Believes and Teaches Handbook, which is the Catechism Handbook, and the uh, activity book, if you have it, if you use it. I'm going to be um, talking about some pages that um, this book presents, and they relate to the doctrine part of the lesson. Just as a reminder, we have uh, coloring pages for some um, of the stories on this unit. Those that are, in, are not illustrated in the student lesson. Uh, we also have uh, seasonal activities for spring, late close lessons in, in case your program goes beyond uh, May 9th. And we also have an Ascension bonus lesson this year available for you. All this is on our website on bonus resources. And uh, that's it. We're ready to start. Very good. We're going to begin with our first lesson in units, Unit 4, the fourth Sunday of Lent. The theme for this lesson is God is always with me. For this gospel, this Sunday, Nicodemus comes to talk to Jesus at night. He's afraid that the other Pharisees will see him. And Jesus tells him to live the truth and to come to the light. This Sunday, we celebrate um, Laetere Sunday. Uh, we, just as we are given the option uh, during Advent to use the color rose on the third Sunday of Advent as a sign of our joy, we may also use rose during the fourth Sunday of Lent because uh, the um, Christians rejoice in the salvation gained by us, for us by Christ, uh, his suffering, his death, and his resurrection. To prepare for this lesson, uh, we are suggesting that you cover the, the page one, the cover of seeds with a black construction paper we are suggesting that you punch holes on this black paper and you use a paper clip to uh, secure it on the cover. That way uh, we're gonna do this activity uh, before we listen to the, to the gospel. 
So to start the lesson, we're going to begin with an activity uh, called Light Helps Us See. The students will close their eyes and uh, you will change something on your appearance. First, something like big. If you're wearing a hat, you take the hat off or you can put a hat on. And then you're going to ask them to open their eyes and tell you what you changed. Then you're going to keep going, changing things that are more subtle. And at the end, you're gonna ask them, what did you see with your eyes closed? Maybe they saw lights, maybe they imagined things. Uh, we want them to be aware of uh, the difference between darkness and light. Now to start with the cover of uh, our lesson, as I told you, we're gonna cover it with black construction paper with some holes. And we're gonna ask the children, what do you see through the black paper? Maybe they'll see a little piece of fruit or maybe they'll just see colors or maybe an eye peeking out. Um, then you're gonna read the gospel to them, which is in the teaching guide or the parent teaching pages. And after listening to the gospel, they are going to remove the black uh, construction paper. They will see the whole cover, which illustrates Nicodemus talking to Jesus at night. And then at the bottom, you're gonna see Nicodemus talking to his family, uh, they're gonna find both Jesus and Nicodemus on the cover. And then they're gonna notice, and you're gonna help them with this. They're gonna notice that at the bottom of the page, Nicodemus seems happy and he's sharing the good news with his family. The word of this week is the word church. Uh, we're going to remind the children that we belong to God's family, and as Nicodemus, we should share what we learn about Jesus with one another. The story for this lesson is about a girl that thinks that there's a monster in her bedroom. Uh, we're going to try not to make this very scary. The story is not scary. She's, she thinks there's a monster, but she can never find it. Um, we are going to explore their feelings of being afraid. But the focus of this activity is that God protects us even more when we are afraid. Here, um, they're gonna uh, circle whatever they, they fear. And the idea again is to remind them that Jesus is always with us with, when we're afraid. Pages three and four, we're gonna make some banners because God protects us, God helps us, and God gives us good things. They're gonna create flags that they're gonna use during the closing prayer. You're gonna bring straws or little um, sticks. They're gonna cut these flags and they're gonna glue them to the straw or the um, little wooden sticks. For the catechism activity on the What the Church Believes and Teaches handbook, they're going to learn a prayer to their guardian angel. We are suggesting that you bring uh, photocopies of this prayer to give them to the children so they can take them home and pray this prayer every night before going to bed. For the activity book, uh, we are talking again that we belong to the church and as uh, Nicodemus did, we have to share what we learned with one another. For the lesson of March 21st, fifth, fifth Sunday of Lent, the theme is God makes food for us. In this gospel, Jesus compares himself to a grain of wheat that falls to the earth and dies in order to produce fruit. This grain then is planted on the ground and seems to die, but new green sprouts push up through the earth. Um, we're gonna focus on this lesson on giving thanks for the food that God has given us and for the many people we share it with. Uh, and Seeds also gives the children the opportunity to share their understanding of the Eucharist, which is a very remote preparation for first communion. We're gonna make the connection there between the grain of wheat bread, communion. To prepare for this lesson, we are suggesting that you make copies of the Blessing Before Meals prayer that I put on lesson 
updates for you. Uh, this is an activity that they're gonna do during the, the catechism section of the lesson. So the blessing before meals is on lesson updates on the website. You can print them. They're gonna do a little activity with that prayer and then they're gonna take them home. Also, we are asking you to cut little red strips of construction paper uh, about five inches by half an inch wide you're gonna need two per child. And also it is a good idea to bring a uh, wheat stock or grains of wheat so the children can see and touch what we are talking about uh, during this gospel. Very good. We're gonna begin with a story about making bread. There is a coloring page for this story on lesson updates. The story is about children helping their mom to make bread. The children are gonna learn the process listening to this story about a family uh, baking bread together. On the cover, before listening to the gospel, we're gonna ask the children, what food do you see here? Well, maybe they're not gonna identify any food because uh, what we have here is wheat that grows from the seed and makes new seeds and we crush it and then we make flour to eat. So we're gonna present all this process to the children here. Here is a good idea to show them the, the weak stock in, in case you brought one. Or maybe an image on the internet is fine. Pages two and three, we have an activity where the children are gonna look at the illustrations where families are sharing different types of bread. Here they're sharing bagels, here they're sharing hamburger buns, sandwich bread. They have tortillas here, which is a type of, you can say it's a type of bread. And then here is where we make the connection with uh, the host in the Holy Communion. They're gonna relate the, the sharing of bread with their families to their own life. And then we're presenting Holy Communion as sharing of bread. We have the priest giving a blessing to a little girl here because uh, most of them are not gonna, they haven't received first communion yet, but uh, maybe they have received a blessing from a priest. The word of the week is Holy Communion. And uh, the last activity is on page four. Uh, they're gonna identify loving and unloving actions. They're gonna write an X next to the pictures that are loving actions. So if they find a, a, an image here where children are doing loving actions, they're gonna write an X on it. And then they're gonna use the strips of red paper that you brought. You're gonna give two to each of them. And they're gonna cancel on loving actions. Uh, you're gonna remind them of the, the do not smoke um, signs that maybe they have seen or do not park here. Uh, where they cross with a red uh, strip actions that are not okay. So that's what we're gonna do here. They're gonna cross the two unloving actions that we're sharing on this page by gluing the red strip of paper diagon diagonally. For the catechism portion of the lesson, we have the blessing before meals. Uh, you have printed the blessing that I put for you on lesson updates. They're gonna color the border to make it into a little uh, placemat and they're gonna take it home so they can practice it with their family every day. And for the activity, oh, this is the blessing before meals prayer that I'm talking about that you're gonna print for them. And for the activity book, in case you use it, uh, we're gonna have an activity regarding the liturgy of the Eucharist. Now we move on to, on to Holy Week. We begin with uh, Palm Sunday, March 28th. The lesson theme is We Welcome Jesus. This Sunday begins the special liturgies of Holy Week. Uh, the, the procession with the palms recalls how the people of Jerusalem welcomed Jesus. And then the Mass includes the reading of the Passion as the Gospel. We're gonna help the children focus on why Jesus did this, to show us God's love and God's wish that we can be free to love with him. Um, 
So on page one, the students will describe what they, they see before the gospel. We're gonna ask them, what do you see here? They're gonna describe, I'm sure they're gonna notice the little donkey and the palms. Maybe uh, some of them will remember from last year, uh, the, the palm procession that we do at church. Then you're gonna proclaim the gospel. On page two, we have an activity that's related to the story of the week. On um, the story of this week, we're gonna talk about a family that is preparing for someone special who will arrive. Uh, this is grandma who's coming to visit. And uh, the story uh, talks about how the family prepares for her arrival. Uh, the children, after listening to the story, they are going to number. You're going to help them by writing the numbers on the board. They're going to number the order in which these actions happened throughout the story. The word of the week is uh, Holy Week. On pages three and four, the children are going to cut these branches and you're gonna help them write their name here. And uh, after that, they are going to make uh, a, a, um, a representation of Jesus's entrance to Jerusalem. Uh, one child is gonna be Jesus, one child is gonna be the donkey, and two or three are gonna be the disciples coming in to Jerusalem. Just, I mean, this may be a little bit obvious, but. Jesus is not going to ride the donkey in, in this uh, activity. So uh, have the donkey be just next to Jesus. Uh, they're going to enter and the rest of the class is going to wave the branches that they did during this activity. They're going to learn the meaning of the word Hosanna as well. For the catechism book, uh, what the church believes and teaches. We're gonna talk about Lent and Easter. They're gonna learn that Easter is the biggest celebration of the church year. And for the activity book, we're gonna talk about the Paschal mystery. For the lesson of Easter and second Easter, which is the Sunday of divine mercy, we have two uh, dates together in one lesson. The the if your group meets on Easter, we we suggest that you do the warm up, proclaim the gospel, and help the children do the folding activity that I'm going to show you in a second. And then on the sec second Sunday of Easter, which is the Divine Mercy Sunday, you review the gospel and complete the activities on pages three four. Uh, if you do not meet on Easter, then do everything on the second Sunday of Easter, just like a regular lesson. Uh, this lesson builds on the children's appreciation of the beauty around them in nature, and it leads them to praise God for setting them in a world of new life and sustaining them and their loved ones in it. We're going to talk about new life. Something that it's optional to bring for uh, this lesson is bells, because we're going to do a little um, activity with them. So we're going to start the lesson by uh, talking about the word Alleluia. We're going to play an Alleluia song, which is called Easter People. It's on the Seeds um, CD. If you don't have it, you can choose any other song that has the, the Alleluia. We're going to remind them that during Lent, we did not sing Alleluia at Mass, but now we can do it because we're happy because Jesus um, rose from the dead. When the song comes to the chorus or where it says Alleluia, that's where you're going to ring the bells uh, to make this a more sensory uh, experience for the children. Now on page one, after listening to the gospel of Jesus's resurrection, the children are going to color the picture here. And then the, we're going to do an activity which involves the page one that they just colored and page two. Uh, you're going to read the words here and you're going to cut on this line or they are going to cut on this line, the top illustration. And then you're going to fold the thumb over Jesus and Mary. There are small numbers here. If you notice, here's a one, two, three, and four. 
um, to help you with the folding. They, you don't have to fold them and unfold them in order, but it's, it's in case you wanna use them. Now, when all the children have completed their folding, you're gonna direct them to put their activity on their desks. And then they're gonna unfold to reveal the, the risen Jesus as you read again the words of the, um, the story that you have here. So when they unfold, as you can see here, they're gonna uncover Jesus. The word of this week is the word creed. And that's where we declare that we, what we believe as Catholics when we pray the creed during mass. We believe in the resurrection of Jesus. On page three, we're gonna talk about Easter. We're gonna explain the meaning of Easter eggs. They remind us of Jesus's resurrection. And just as new life is hidden inside an egg, uh, so was Jesus hidden inside the tomb after he died. Then God called him to new life. So the hard shell of the egg symbolizes the sealed tomb of Jesus Christ. When we crack an egg, it symbolizes Jesus's resurrection from the dead. They're gonna cut the eggs on the top part of the page. They can just cut the squares if they're not very experienced with scissors or if they feel comfortable, they can cut the uh, shapes of the eggs. After that, they're gonna color the words Happy Easter and they are going to uh, put their eggs here on the basket. Talk about the symbols here. We have the symbol of new life with a butterfly, the, the symbol of the lamb because Jesus is the lamb of God, the Holy Spirit. Talk about these different uh, symbols with the children. On page four, to begin the activity, they are going to paint, pantomime the signs of spring. They're gonna act like maybe baby birds flying, bunnies jumping, flowers growing. And then you're gonna ask them to put an X on the different signs of spring that are hidden here in the illustration. Explain again that the lamb is another symbol for Jesus. Maybe they have heard during mass that we call Jesus the Lamb of God. For the catechism page, we are, since we are approaching the end of our year, we are gonna review some concepts that they have learned so far, and they are part of our beliefs of, as Catholics. Remember the word of the week was creed? The activity book page uh, is gonna talk about our beliefs as Catholic as well in the creed. For the third Sunday of Easter on April 18th, the theme is Jesus surprises his friends. In this gospel, the reason Jesus appears to his friends when they are walking to Emmaus. Seeds help, helps the children identify uh, the feelings of fear, shame, disbelief, and joy that the disciples felt at the time of Jesus' death and resurrection. They must have been really, really scared. Uh, the, our children, preschool children, know what it's like to be happy, sad, and angry. It is important that they recognize their feelings were given by God, so they're good. It is okay to feel happy, sad, even angry, but we have to find the appropriate ways to deal with these feelings. It's okay to be angry. It's not okay to hit your brother because you're angry. For in preparation for this lesson, we are suggesting that you bring some fishing equipment. You don't have to, but it helps give the children uh, have to give the children a more sensory experience uh, on one of the activities. We're also suggesting that you bring an image. Uh, a picture or, or a video of uh, Pope Francis. On page four, after listening to the gospel of the disciples walking to Emmaus, the children will retell the story using the illustration. They're gonna see the marks. You're gonna help them note, notice the marks on Jesus's hands. This means that he already rose from the dead. The two men with the hats are the travelers. They are very happy. And uh, we are gonna notice that one of Jesus's friends 
not one of these two, but one of Jesus's friends who Jesus has visited after he died will become our first Pope. On page two, we have a story. Uh, first, they're gonna, you're gonna ask them if they've ever been fishing. You are gonna show them the fishing equipment. If you brought it, you're gonna allow them to talk about their fishing experiences. And now you're gonna tell them the story about this girl that wants to go fishing, but there's no one to take her. So she writes a letter to her aunt and she has to wait until the aunt gets the letter and then comes back. After you tell them the story, you're gonna help them identify how the girl felt with, when she couldn't go fishing, when she had to wait for the letter uh, to arrive to her aunt and when her aunt came to take her fishing. On pages three and four, you are gonna help the children do a booklet about feelings. We suggest that you have yours ready so you can show them the order of the pages. We have numbers here for the pages as well. They're just gonna make one cut and then you're gonna help them assemble the, the book in order. First, they're going to identify the expression on the faces of these children here on the cover. And then you're gonna go page by page, uh, give you them, you're gonna give them a crayon or a pencil and they are going to uh, use their pencil to do uh, the expressions on their faces on each page. Maria feels surprised. They're gonna do a little mouth here showing her surprise. Todd feels sick, a little sad face here, etc. Um, so for the doctrine, uh, remember we, we talked about how one of Jesus's friends was gonna become the Pope in the future. We're gonna start talking to the children today about the church leadership. We're gonna continue next week with this. So uh, today we're gonna talk about Pope Francis. We're gonna show them the image, the picture that you have of him. Maybe some of them are familiar with them. Um, and we are going to introduce the word of the week, which is perish. Here, the children will uh, follow the lines to make different churches. And these are different parishes all over the world. Well, the Pope is the leader of all these parishes, including ours. And uh, we are gonna keep talking about this in the activity book with the doctrinal theme being the church. For the fourth Sunday of Easter, which is April 25th, we're gonna talk, talk about the Good Shepherd. This is a lesson and a story that children really, really enjoyed. Um, our young children depend on the help of their families, their teachers, and other children um, most of the time. They are very young, but even though they're young, they can also be helpers if the task that we give them is okay with the, it, it's um, within the range of their abilities. Uh, we are going to allow them to do many things by themselves, and this will encourage them to reach out to others and be helpers. Even though they're small and they're young, they can help others. Uh, Seeds is gonna help them see how they can care for pets, for plants, maybe a baby boy or a baby sister uh, is a form of being a shepherd. On page one, before they read the gospel, uh, we're gonna present them with uh, the, this scenario where Jesus lived, there were a lot of sheep, uh, people made clothes and blankets from their wool. They drank their milk to be strong. And then they really wanted to keep their sheep safe and healthy because they were very useful to them. So the people who care for the sheep are called shepherds. Now you're going to tell them the gospel, which is in the teaching guide or the parent teaching pages. And after listening to the gospel, you're going to describe the image. They're gonna notice that they are uh, some boulders here making like a pen. Uh, the, the sheep are grazing here, they're eating on green pastures. Uh, you're gonna help them notice the shepherd's crook. 
And uh, you're gonna ask them, why, why do you think he's carrying this? Well, this helps him not to stumble when, we're, when he's walking on the rocky hills. And the hook on the top also helps him reach out and pull back a sheep that it's in danger. The word of the week is pastor. Remember last week we started talking about the leadership in the, the church. We're talking about the Pope. This week we're going to talk about our pastor. So um, if uh, you know the name of your pastor, please uh, share it with them so they start getting familiar with them. Pages two and three, it's an activity uh, about bringing the sheep home. First of all, they are going to cut here, the strip on the right on page three. They're gonna cut up the sheep. This sheep is gonna be um, their, um, their marker for the game. Uh, if you notice on this side, this sheep is green and on the other side, the sheep is blue. So it allows for two players at the same time. You're gonna cut the sheep and you're gonna fold it following this dotted line so it stands on its own. Then you're gonna cut apart the 10 squares. Five of them have colors, five of them have dangers. You're gonna put them in a pile. The children will put their markers, the, the sheep, the green one or the blue one, here at the beginning of the game. And then they're gonna take turns drawing a square from the pile. If the square is a color, they're gonna move their sheep to that color. If the square is a danger, they're gonna move the sheep to that danger. For example, here to the wolf. And they will tell you how the shepherd will keep them safe from that danger. The idea is to move the sheep all the way till they get safely to the pen. Now, for the next activity, the back of these squares that they cut and they used for the game have an image of a shepherd. They are gonna to try to put the image together. Make sure you have an envelope to send this activity home with the children so they can uh, do it with their families. The last activity here on page four is a thank you activity. They're going to point out that there are some children here playing, praying at night. And then you're going to notice that the other four uh, pictures are showing people helping the children. They're going to identify how each of them is helping one of the children. And then we're going to give thanks to God for the people in our lives that help us. The closing prayer for this lesson is Psalm 23. The prayer is going to be in your teaching guide or your parent teaching pages. On the catechism handbook, we're going to talk about the Good Shepherd. The children are going to write their names and the names of their families here on the sheep. And uh, the doctrine uh, concept that we're going to talk about on the activity book is an introduction to the sacrament of the holy orders priests, bishops, and the Pope are the shepherds of the church. May 2nd, the fifth Sunday of Easter, the theme for this lesson is we grow to be like Jesus. In this Sunday's gospel, Jesus refers to himself as the vine. He says that his followers are the branches. Children need to know that they belong. Seeds provide stories and activities that help them recognize their connections to their families, to the church, and to the larger community. Uh, and it's in these connections that the children are able to recognize the connection that they have with Jesus. For, to prepare for this lesson, uh, we ask you to have a copy of the book Swimmy. We have all the information on the teaching guide and the parent teaching pages. Uh, you can get a copy from the book at your local library or maybe your school library. If you cannot find it, we are providing a, a YouTube link to this. The link that I put on the teaching guide for some reason expired after we went to press. So the link on the teaching guide is not working. 
but I have a link on lesson updates that you can use to find the video of the story um, swimming. We also suggest that you bring a branch or a plant to illustrate the gospel. Very good, we're gonna begin with an activity to show the children that we are all connected. You're gonna sit them in a circle and you're gonna ask them simple questions like, uh, who has a brother? Who likes pizza? Questions in which several of them are going to respond yes at the same time. You're gonna continue with questions that fit your group so make sure that every child raises their hand a few times. And then you're gonna point out that we are all connected to other people and we need other people too. You're gonna to explain the term community. This is a word that we use to talk about groups that have a connection and who care for one another. Uh, then you're gonna ask them, what is a community you belong to? Well, maybe they're gonna say my family or seats class, or my city, the church, a sports team. Help them get these answers so they can think and realize that they belong to a community. Now you're gonna read the story swimming, or you're gonna show the video that I have on lesson updates. Um, it's a story about a fish that realizes that it is important to be part of a community. Now on page one, before you read the gospel, uh, you're gonna show them the branch and uh, you're gonna ask them what they know about growing plants. They need water, they need sun, they produce fruit. After you read the gospel, you're gonna ask what connects you to Jesus? Well, we are his brothers and sisters through baptism. We are children of God. And then you're gonna ask them, what can you do to make your connection to Jesus stronger? Well, maybe they're going to say that they can make loving cho choices, that they can come to seats class, that they can pray every day, that they can obey their parents, uh, help them come up with ideas on how to become um, more connected to Jesus, to have a stronger connection to him. After you finish talking to them, have them color the branch here on this activity. Pages two and three we have an activity that demonstrates how we can help one another. We are connected, we can help one another. First of all, they're gonna cut the squares here on page three. These are tools that these uh, people here need to help one another. On the teaching guide and on the parent teaching pages, we have stories about each one of these people. You're gonna read the story and there you're gonna ask them to identify the tools that they need to help others. For example, this, uh, he is a faith formation teacher, a catechist. Well, he needs scissors and glue and crayons to give his classes. So after you read the story about him, the children are gonna put the tools that he needs close to him. For page four, we're gonna thank God for our world. And we are going to emphasize that our job as part of the community, as part of the world is to take care of it. We continue talking about the church leadership. We are gonna talk about who leads our church family. Give them the name of your pastor and any other um, priest and deacon in your parish so they're familiar with it. And then on the activity page, we are talking about being community, loving God and loving others. Now the last lesson in unit four and in our seats year is sixth Sunday of Easter. Easter. The lesson theme is Jesus followers love one another. And the gospel, Jesus gives us the, the greatest commandment, love one another as I have loved you. Uh, this gospel comes from Jesus' farewell discourse to his disciples at the Last Supper. It is a summary of all the message that he has given us. God sent Jesus to show the unlimited love that he has for us. 
On seeds, we're gonna explore ways the young children can give and receive love by sharing, helping, and cooperating. We continue uh, with this talk of being a community. To, prep, to prepare for the lesson, we ask you that you separate pages one and two from three, four. And uh, if you can, it is a good idea to bring rosaries for the children to take home, uh, but it's just an option. You don't have to. We're gonna begin by telling them that during the month of May, we honor Mary as our mother. Uh, we're gonna ask them what they know about Mary uh, make sure that they know that she's Jesus's mother and that she's our mother too. On page one, we have a folding activity that uh, here are the instructions on this diagram on top of the page. And we're gonna show them that by loving one another, uh, those actions bring people together. The story for this week is not illustrated on the lesson, so it has a coloring page on our website on lesson updates. Uh, it's about a boy who is looking for the best gift for um, his mother. This week we celebrate Mother's Day. On, um, I'm gonna wait a little bit to talk about page two, but on pages three and four, we're gonna have a um, an activity that is gonna help you with the story um, that you just listened to about the boy uh, wanting to have a gift for his mom. They're gonna cut on this horizontal line and then they're gonna cut on this vertical line but just up to here. They have to stop here at the dot, they're not to cut all the way. It's a good idea to have an aid for this activity, or if you want to, you could do the cutting before class and just hand out the, 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 the cards to them so they could assemble them to make, um, uh, uh, you're gonna nest them together to, so they can stand up and they're going to retell the story they heard using their cards. OK, we come back to page two. To talk about Mary on this lesson, we are going to listen to a story that's in the teaching guide and the parent teaching pages about uh, several children that have a name related to the name of Mary. And the children will ask themselves, well, how many Marys are there? Uh, and they're gonna realize that there's only one Mary, but there are a lot of names are related to her or a lot of people are named after her to honor her. Uh, we're gonna have an activity on page two, which is an introduction to the rosary. We remember that the month of May is a special month in which we honor Mary. And one way to honor Mary during May is to pray the rosary. We're gonna explain that the rosary is prayed by saying five Our Fathers and 50 Hail Marys while thinking about events in Jesus's life. We're gonna ask the children to color the large beads blue, that it's gonna be the Our Fathers, and then the little beads, we're gonna color them in red. Explain that when we get to the larger beads, we pray the Our Father, and when we get to the smaller beads, we pray the Hail Mary. For our closing prayer, if you have rosaries for each child, you can give them one, and then pray one decade of the rosary, and encourage them to keep praying them at home. For the catechism um, activity, we're gonna review some of the vocabulary that we learned during the year, and we're gonna pay special attention to uh, the words Mary and mother. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna invite children to uh, tell you if, look at the illustrations and try to guess what word uh, we're talking about. For example, here, maybe they're gonna say, Ash Wednesday, which is perfect, or here they're going to say baptism. It's just a review. So this brings us to uh, the end 
of our year for seats. If you have any questions, uh, any comments about the lessons, about the guides, please send me an email to editor at flum.com and I'll be happy to uh, talk to you. Now for the bilingual uh, lessons that we have for seats, I always want to, to remind you that our teaching guide is not gonna come with the rest of your um, package for lesson four. It doesn't come in Spanish with the English guide and with the lessons. You can print the, the teaching guide in Spanish by visiting uh, gospelweeklies.com. And if you hit the main menu, uh, Recursos en Español, Spanish Resources, you can find the option to print your teaching guide there, or you can contact your sales representative and ask for a printed copy. We have the parent teaching guides in Spanish on our website, gospelweeklies.com. If you click in, in uh, Recursos para las Familias, Family Resources, you're going to find an option there for uh, parent teaching pages so your parents can teach the, the lesson at home in Spanish. Here is the, the web page, Recursos en Español. Here you're going to find the songs in Spanish, the coloring pages, you're gonna find uh, lesson updates in, in Spanish where uh, your parents, your catechists are gonna find the coloring pages for the lessons in Spanish. Here, for example, in this unit, I uploaded the Swimmy um, story. In Spanish, it's called Nadarin. I found um, uh, uh, the story in Spanish and I found the video, so I put it up here for you. Uh, and any other uh, resource that I find, the, the, the um, assessments in Spanish are here. So everything you need for your bilingual lessons, you're gonna find it here. As always, if you need anything, if you have any questions, send me an email, editor at flum.com. Thank you so much and God bless you.